Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Lewis Reyes, and I'm your exchange's senior enlisted advisor. I am so excited for today's guest. We have a little mystery, a little magic, and I think some jokes. It's going to be super <laughs> exciting. But before we get to our guests, let me introduce my co-host, Julie Mitchell, Leah Matthews. Ladies, how are you doing today? Good to see you. Hi, Chief. Doing good. Good to see you guys again today. Good, good to hear you. Good to see you. Julie, guess what? I got a joke. So everybody in the comments, oh, no. please, please, please tell me if it's funny or not. Are you ready? What oh, do you no. call a magic owl? What? Houdini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me let me let me pass this off to the pros. Julie, do you mind introducing our guest? Your joke combined two of my favorite things, magic and owls. So hats <laughs> off to you. That was great, Chief. So our guests today are gonna keep you guessing with the tricks they have up their sleeves. They are professional magicians who have a comedy singing magic act. They're also husband and wife. We're excited to welcome them to our chat today. Please give a round of applause for Fred and Bobby Becker. Hey, guys. <laughs> applause. A round of applause. Magic, magic. No, magic, magic, magic. <laughs> I'm going to. So I understand the chief has some magic tricks to do as well. I, oh, I might, I might do a couple. Might. I'm going to wait for the right point, and then I'm, I'm going to yeah. show you one, and then we'll have like a, like a little battle. Okay. I, yeah. I have a feeling. I have a feeling you're gonna win. I don't oh, know. My tricks. <laughs> you're gonna be strategic battle. about it. I'm gonna be strategic mm -hmm. about my magic watch. Nice. <laughs> nice. I like I'm excited. It. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> well, Fred and Bobby, thank you so much for joining us. We're super excited to have you guys on. You're our first magicians to the show, so we have been looking forward to this and for everybody watching drop a note in the comments let us know where you're watching from and if you have any questions for fred and bobby we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast now is a good time to start your watch party so you can enjoy this super magic show with your friends and if you're not already following us you should why chief chats are every tuesday and thursday so you'll know who's coming up next hey so let's let's get this going a quick couple quick questions and then we get to a little magic dual all right you ready yeah. so fred and bobby thanks for coming on i appreciate it it's a pleasure to have you with us here today just tell us where you're coming to us from and how you've been this summer how's everything going okay well um we are in dallas texas although i'm pennsylvania so anybody watching uh whose hometown is somewhere in pa you're my peeps and um <laughs> Bobby was sort of a military brat in a way. She moved around a lot. So yeah. I don't know where you call home. Well, no, I was only really a military brat for the first six months of my life. But I did kind of grow up in the Houston area. And then we moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And now I'm back in the Dallas metro you area. Were in Missouri so, and yeah, Norfolk, so, Virginia so, originally. So yeah. But we're coming to you from the Dallas metro. And uh, we, the summer's been hot and uh, we're hanging in there. <laughs> summer's been hot and unemployed yes so yeah you might yeah. imagine as entertainers when the pandemic hit it just killed our industry so we um we just hang around and talk to people on on zoom on zoom <laughs> and that is exactly you know what we wanted to talk to you about, or one of the things we wanted to ask you is as performers COVID, I mean, it, ha it has to be really hard for y'all. How have you been keeping busy, keeping your spirits up and connecting with your fans during this time? Yeah, it, that's a really good question. Do you yeah. want to start that? Well, you know, when it first happened, you don't, you, the, the sort of cruise line came to a screeching halt, which is where we do a lot of our, the majority of our work. We do work corporate events and theaters and um, different events, you know, all over the world as well. But cruise lines are, take up a bulk of our year. So when that came to a screeching halt, you, you sort of in the initial phase think that it's, it'll be temporary and then everything will kind of get back up and running. So I think in the beginning we were kind of like, okay, well, it's just a little bit couple of a break. Weeks, couple months. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden it just one, you know, a couple of a month drags into two, then three, then four. And so you go through sort of these phases where, you know, there was like a we hit them at different periods of time where we both in sort of an emotional funk and not sure what mm. to do. And then you switch and then, you know, like he gets super creative and he's like, you know, let's do this, let's do that. So he spends a lot of time working on his craft. 
We've been doing um, fun video segments and having our um, fans ask us questions. Uh, and then we do a thing we call Becker Answers, where we sit around and talk about mm -hmm. random questions that people ask us. And then <laughs> we, um, we put those out just to stay in touch with everybody. And yeah, we've been you know using our back deck and grilling a lot and uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep our spirits up because you know it, getting down doesn't really do you any good. So yeah, we're sort of traveling entertainers uh, for the most part. So I've always referred to our house as the vacation home because <laughs> <laughs> we only have the one, but we only see it when we're not working, exactly. right? And now we're actually living in our house, which is um, a kind of a new experience for us. <laughs> it is. I think we spent a little bit of time like, uh, what do we do? Once we put the suitcases away, that was really weird because forever they just kind of stay sort of half packed. Yeah, and because uh, we'll be leaving in a week or so. Yeah, so, um, so that was kind of strange. But yeah, we're doing our best to keep our spirits up and try to just, you know, stay hopeful and positive and, and life takes you where it takes you, so. Well, let's yeah. face it, the world has gone crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it's great to see that you're having a positive attitude, yeah. uh, you know, especially with the current situation going on. And I hope to see you on a cruise ship soon. So yes. with that, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Are you ready? Here okay. it goes. I'm gonna do my trick first, and then it's gonna be your turn. Okay. All right, let's the, see what you is got. Is the audience ready for this trick? I All think right, they're audience, ready. Wait. Be ready. Yeah, be ready. Excited. Check this out, everyone. Two rings. You see it? One, two. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Look at that, everyone. <laughs> uh -oh. It's gonna steal your job. <laughs> yes, there we go. Round of applause for Lewis. Thank you. She Thank you everyone. I'll be don't. here all day. <laughs> let me stop. Do not quit the Air Force. No, don't quit <laughs> yeah. the Air Force. So let's so let's pass this off to our uh our, our professional magicians here. Fred Bobby, you're up. Okay. So magic. Yeah. Uh -oh. It takes some magic to follow that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I set you uh, up perfectly. I set you yeah. up perfectly. Okay. Well, let's do this. I, I have to tell you, it can be rather difficult to be performing magic over the internet because it's a different there, medium. It's yeah. a different medium. People are used to being able to see it in person, and that's where the surprise and the fun comes from. So there's a, a little bit of a credibility factor I have to hear. For example, if I were to show something to the audience, like I have a cardboard box here. And the important thing here is to know for a fact that it's completely empty. If, if it weren't empty to begin with, then there wouldn't be a surprise later on, for example. So you guys have to be the judge for me. Is that completely empty? Yes. No, no. Decks of cards, no mirrors, no bunny rabbits. I mean, Looks you can empty tell, to me. right? Okay. Sadly. Well, this could be way no easier rabbits. than I thought what? then, because um, <laughs> wow. totally missed it. I was about to complain that we didn't have a bunny okay. rabbit. Okay. All right, I think I think I can do this. Okay. Well, <laughs> I have in my possession a deck of cards. Now, when I bring this out uh, in a live audience. I can see on people's faces, they're like, that's a marked deck. You use it, I'm sure there are marked deck of cards. And um, I don't use marked cards, but people think that. Uh, but I decided I should probably own one. So this is actually <laughs> a marked deck of cards. And I will show you the markings here in just a moment. Um, but they're, they're not marked for cheating, they're marked for entertainment purposes only. So, uh, you know what, I have a second camera. This is like a big production here. So let me switch <laughs> to the other camera. All right. And yeah. I just got a tutorial on how to yeah. do this right there, right? Bob's my producer is here. Is that right? Okay. No, uh, yes. Yeah, that's okay. right, here we go. Oh switch yeah. The camera. Oh, got okay. it? Okay. Yeah. So uh, before I bring the cards out and show you how they're marked, um, if uh, let's go, we'll go Leah. If you were to name any card in a deck of cards, what would it be? Uh, the ace of spades. Ace of spades. Now, to be fair, that's <laughs> was that a good kind choice? Of right there on the front. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> queen of hearts. Queen, queen of, of hearts. hearts. Okay. So there now you picked a card even you didn't know you would pick, right? Right. Okay. So, 
So actually, <laughs> we might circle around to that uh, a little bit because look right there on the top ace of spades. That would have been like, wow, that's the trick. But it just so happens that this particular deck of cards has, you said queen of hearts, right? Yes. Yeah. It actually has a queen of hearts in it. And there she is right there. Now, um, in order to actually, we'll leave that one. Can you still see it on the tip? Yeah. Do you want me to hold it? Okay. I think it's still visible. Okay. Now, here's how the cards are marked, and it's very subtle. You you might need to you may, <laughs> you may see some drawings on here that are a little different than you'd see on most decks of cards. Is that I, you? Yeah, yeah, it's a little yeah. I'm not a great artist. <laughs> and apparently I haven't eaten in a while. <laughs> on each of the cards oh is gosh. a little magician standing on a stage, and notice that in each picture he's in a slightly different position do you see how his arms are a little bit different yeah so if i line these up and run my finger on the edge of the cards i can actually create the illusion of movement you know, <laughs> yeah that's how they used to make cartoons before there were computers now if i run my finger the opposite way we may actually get him to perform a little show for us watch he tips his hat to the ladies waves his hand above the hat, reaches down inside and pulls out, not a rabbit, but a card. But not just any card. If we ask him nicely to turn it over, you may see printed on the face of it, the letter Q and oh a little gosh. heart because you oh asked for the queen of hearts. And the best part of the trick, I think, in my opinion, is when I uh, run my finger the opposite direction. You see, he puts the card back in the hat, the hat back on his head, and then he holds out his arms for all your applause. Oh my gosh. So awesome. <laughs> Bob, there, was, there was there okay. was no prior discussion. Like we did not talk about this. Like that was totally magic. Like <laughs> oh my yes. gosh. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, and that is the problem, really. When I do that and I say name a card, everybody watching may be thinking, well, he told her ahead of time to say that. And uh, I was kind of lucky that she picked it up. Yeah, that, and that is one of the challenges of doing shows over Zoom, um, you know, for a magician specifically, because you really need the benefit of the audience to know that there was nothing preset, although they, they still sometimes come up with hilarious ways that they think we do things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Usually the theories behind how a trick is done is way better than the truth. <laughs> yeah, there, there, hey, there, there are no stooges on this show, all right? No. Everyone out there, there you no go. stooges, all right? That's We're right. not using- Well, there's some question about that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he got you, Chief. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, wait, wait till you see my next trick. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> it's probably more embarrassing than that one, but it'll, it'll... <laughs> awesome. Well, well, guys, that was so much fun. Thank you so much for sharing that trick. And everybody watching, that was definitely not staged on our end. So, and stick but around. Bobby and Fred. Here's a question. Oh, yeah, that's, that's not just a, that's We've not been a wondering question. what that question what? mark is about. We've been Can wondering. I Bobby Driving doesn't me even nuts. Know. I want to know I so bad. No idea what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys tell us a little bit more about your background and how Becker Magic got started? Okay. Um, that's actually a pretty cool story in the sense that uh, I always perform my show pretty much uh, as a solo magician. I started out, like I said, in Pennsylvania. I'm an only child and somehow took a liking to magic and there's there's a joke, I didn't make this up, but there's a joke among magicians that say, uh, when I was a child, I said to my father, when I grow up, I want to be a magician. And he said, you can't do both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sweet. As a, a lot of people that get involved in magic start as young children. And I literally just stayed there because I, I thought this is as good as life gets. And I sort of dedicated myself to learning the craft and and going out and spreading um spreading magic wherever i could and you really haven't done many other jobs i never I mean, had a real job you yeah. pretty much started performing and getting paid for it as a young man and kept doing it so you've been one of the fortunate few yeah who gets to do what you love and as a teenager i met a guy in magic and he said cruise ships that's where you want to be 
because there's a captive audience on board the ship. You travel around the world and you get to, they pay you to do your show. And I thought, you know what? That sounds like a pretty good idea. And I set my goal on that and ended up uh, working on cruise ships where one day I met this young lady and I'll let yeah. you pick up the story from there. Yeah, I was singing on cruise ships in the production shows and uh, having a great time um, with, you know, the big, if you've been on a cruise, then you know, there's always yeah. like uh, the singers and the dancers. And, um, and then this guy was on the cruise, you know, he, we're what's called a guest entertainer. So guest entertainers often travel alone. They'll, you know, they're um, a single act that go out by themselves. And we were in were a cast part of, of a cast of, yeah, it's 12? like 12 people. Mm -hmm. And so, at, you know, just as a general rule, we would kind of always invite guest entertainers to do things with us. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty the short story we met. And then apparently I looked and, lonely. Yeah. I had puppy dog eyes <laughs> yeah. and she oh. took pity oh. on me. And then slowly but surely one thing led to another that they took production shows off of the ship that we were working on at the time, which um, Fred had a lot of grand illusions on the ship. And so he was able to say, I really need an assistant. You know, you took the production show off of the cruise ship and there he was the biggest production out there at that point in time but he didn't have an assistant so that allowed me to join the show you need a girl that you can saw in half yeah so <laughs> yeah so then i joined the show and um slowly but surely <laughs> unwisely we, you went i'll do it <laughs> yeah we modified the show into some uh the, the 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 longer we were together the more that we knew that the we, we, we had a future and we were going to get married the more um fred wanted to incorporate more of what i did into the show and it became sort of what we call music magic and mischief so oh. yeah. we call it magic wow. music. i call magic it music magic talk. and mischief because i like the music to come first I you think can see where better. this is heading right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been together for 13 years now um and that's that's our story yeah yeah wow awesome. so so that's great. Thank you. Uh, uh, I know you both, both of you come from military families. Can you tell us a little bit about the heroes in your family and how it affected you growing up? I'll tell you, uh, I have a much smaller family. Uh, Bobby's got a large family, so I'll go first. Okay. It's faster. Yeah. Um, my grandfather, I know, was in the U.S. Army. He was uh, in World War II, deployed in France. And uh, I think we even have a picture of him in his um, uniform. We um, do, yes. So yeah, let's... he was actually Fred Jr. I'm Fred the Fourth. Yeah, there he is. is. There awesome. we go. Yeah, look how slim he was, man. Handsome. <laughs> uh, he was in the uh, car business as a civilian. So in World War II, he was put in charge of the motor pool. And um, in France, I'm not sure what city in France, honestly. And uh, funny enough, after the war was over, we almost lost him to the transport going home. They were put on these uh, Liberty ships that were things that were put together pretty quickly in the US. They were welded together. And apparently on the trip back to New York, mm -hmm. it uh, started to come apart and they had to do emergency repairs uh, because the ship was sinking on their way back home. Uh, and then my father was in the Air Force. Uh, when I Go was Air Force. Go Air yeah. Force. <laughs> yeah, he was in the Air Force and uh, pretty much during peacetime. So he was Thanks, not Bobby. deployed. Um, he was deployed in Alaska uh, at the Air Force. Uh, I forget the name of the Air Force Base, but uh, kind of kind of an important- Up in Anchorage, up in Anchorage or Alaska. Yeah, up, uh, up in Anchorage. I forgot yeah. the name of the base, but- um, what is that, Elmendorf? I have a picture. Eilson? El Elmendorf? I think it's Elmendorf. Uh, Elmendorf Air Force Base. That doesn't sound familiar. He'd know. He, he, knows. Does, he doesn't yeah. forget He's anything. He's going to be like, how could you have forgotten? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So All I have I his is, photo up now, yeah. too. Yeah. When I was uh, like one, two years old, he brought brought home a little flight suit for me. So one of my favorite Aww. baby pictures Aww. is me in this little flight suit. Oh, you suit. should have that picture. That would be cute. I have it yeah. somewhere. I, I have I, no picture, so I yeah. can't complain. But, but yeah, so those are my, uh, those are my immediate family uh, military members. I know my, my yeah. mother's father was in the police force, but I don't know if he had um, military, military background or not. We've, we've lost uh, yeah. all those records. So. But, and I, I was actually born in Norfolk. My dad was in the Navy. Um, and so uh, I only lived there for about six months of my life. Um, dad was an aviation electronics mate. <laughs> and um, he actually was in the Navy for four years. Uh, and he, he left to go to college. 
because he wanted to, uh, he had his commercial pilot's license and he wanted to get his, I wrote it down so I didn't mess it up, certified flight instructor um, a license. And he heard that there was a program at this college where you could go and get that and work as a flight instructor while you went to school. So he did that and um, he worked, uh, got all these different certifications and stuff and worked as a, as a flight instructor while getting his college degree when I was just a, a wee little pumpkin. And, uh, <laughs> and um, so we lived in Missouri uh, back then and dad worked as a, a flight instructor and then as a private pilot for um, a guy who, that, I think his company eventually went, the, the private pilot company eventually went belly up. And um, so um, my, uh, my dad's best friend, who was, I called my uncle, you know, said, Hey, why not, you know, Delta, I'm working for Delta Airlines. Maybe you should take a, take a, a, a look at Delta. So dad got a job with Delta and we moved to Houston, um, him, him moving on to Delta Airlines. But um, all, I have a huge family on both sides, my, da- my mom and my dad. Um, but my dad's entire side of the family pretty much is the military. My uncle Phil um, was a senior chief aviation electronics um, chief, and he's in Pensacola now. So still, and he was still yeah. teaching. He was actually teaching. I think he was an E8 when he when he retired. Um, and my uncle Joe, awesome, awesome situation. He spent um, eight years in the Navy and then went to the Army. He was actually a medevac chopper um, in Vietnam. Yeah. Oh, so wow. Wow. that was pretty cool. Wow. Um, my uncle, uncle Terry, I just found this out when I was talking to my dad was in the Navy as well. And he was on the, I hope I say this right. Bon Hami Richard in the Tonkin Gulf combat. And he actually hooked up the airplanes to the catapults. And, uh, so dad was telling me some fun stories about some things that, you know, he witnessed and saw so that was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, those are amazing. Yeah. Exactly. And then actually my, my uncle also, I have an extended family where the people that I grew up with that um, I, I got like a third set of grandparents, which equaled more aunts and uncles and cousins, because <laughs> um, I was named after my uncle, Bob, who was my dad's best friend growing up. His name was Robert Eugene and I'm Bobby Jean. So he was actually oh. a Lieutenant in the Navy. He worked on nuclear submarines and, um, so yeah, I have rich history of family and tons. I couldn't even list them all. I started writing them down. Cousins, all cousins, cousins, all my cousins that have been in different branches of the military. A lot of them Navy, a lot of them Army. Um, just I started writing everybody down, and I was like, okay, yeah, my entire family on is been military. So. <laughs> Thank you both for sharing your family legacies yeah. with us. That's so great. I can tell that you're so proud of your family and the photos were fantastic as well. Yeah. Those got great reception. More photos. <laughs> so we have yeah, soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> there um you can tell that they meant a lot to you and thank you for sharing those with us. Yeah. We love seeing stuff like that. And yeah, we have we soldiers have <laughs> we have military watching from all over the world. So soldiers, airmen, sailors, marines, coasties. Yay. Like most of us, they've uh, they faced a lot of adjustments Listies. and challenges during this pandemic. And do you have any words of hope or encouragement that you can share with our heroes today? Yeah. Um, boy, where to begin? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I would just say, you know, it. a lot of things are easier said than done. Um, you know, people can give you advice all of the time, but I truly believe that happiness and um happiness is a choice. The way that you look at life is a choice. Um, a lot of times, you know, the weight of the world is on your shoulders and literally with our troops, um, the fate of the world is on their shoulders and, um, we could not thank them enough for their service and for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country and the people that put their lives on the line regularly. I, we have so much gratitude in our hearts. I, I mean, it, I, I feel like I was born like a patriot, just bursting with patriotism. And um, it's really hard for me to contain it. We're in the public public eye. So we try to keep everything sort of, um, you know, we don't get involved with a lot of controversial topics or of any sort, but I'm like, go troops, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we love our troops. And, you know, honestly, uh, you face, people face different challenges. Everybody faces different challenges. And I think that if you just, if you, try to always see the good in a situation or realize your worth and what you're doing, what you're accomplishing for others. You find happiness when you are, <clears throat> when you realize your worth and what you're doing and providing for other people, I, um, I you think can draw a, a lot of happiness yeah, from that. On a personal level, most people in life never feel fulfilled because they're, they're searching for significance. 
They want to do something significant. And the people in the military actually achieve that. What you're doing is so significant and it matters so much. Um, you, you have so much to be proud of. You know, I do card tricks for a living. I, I really don't do anything that compares to what you guys do. So, um, you know, our hats are off to you. Yeah, we really believe there, there's a correlation, you know, you, um, providing happiness for others and joy for others and safety for others and security for others. It's, you know, you do card tricks, but you, you provide a world that gives people laughter and joy. <clears throat> Only and because our, these people and our troops put us, are put giving us, us the opportunity to place, do what we yeah. love. And, um, but you know, in the pandemic, it's just such a strange world. And uh, I don't think our troops are, <laughs> I don't think they're paid enough. I don't think that um, they get the recognition and the honor that they truly deserve from everybody. Um, so at least from the two of us, you know, we, um, you know, we, our hats are off to you. And um, hopefully this brings you a little bit of joy today. <laughs> our, our, our silly little magic tricks. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. well, Fred and Bobby, thank you so much for that. Actually, you are getting a lot of likes and loves. Um, people are saying, thank you. Uh, I'm looking for the one comment where he says, uh, Hello, nice start to the day. Hi. And people are sharing that are watching from all over the world. Blake Richardson, he t tunes in quite a lot. Chris Martin says, thank you for sharing your talents with us. Um, Chief, did I miss anything? Chris Martin says, thanks for your service. Blake, uh, Blake says he wants to see a trick his, his kid missed. I yeah. told him, oh, there's one coming up soon. Just just yeah. stand by. We yeah. almost got a couple, okay. couple more questions and we get to trick number two. I think we more got like magic. more or magic. I think we got a few sets of magic going on yeah. here. But, um, Everybody's but, like, we tuned in for magic. What's happening here? Yeah, Why I know, right? Talking? Why are these guys talking so much? <laughs> That's what we're saying. <laughs> but we got to talk, right? We got to build the story. But here's a quick question, right? You told me uh, on the phone, you told me, that you were both like merchant marines. Can you tell yeah. your audience a story about yeah. what that means? How does that work out? It was an I interesting we, story. I wish we knew what it meant for real. Yeah. So, no, I mean, we do, but. it's a, So here's what happened. Uh, as you know, we work on cruise ships and for the most part, cruise ships are um, operated outside of the United States. And there is a law that extends from the Jones Act, which is a kind of an older obscure shipping law that came out to protect the shipping industry, the, the, the domestic. Sh domestic shipping industry. Yeah. yeah. It was designed to protect American ship workers and such. And, and to be appropriate, there's a, a version of that for cruise ships, which is right. like the passenger not vessel sure, Not sure what it's called. We all refer to it like as that. the Jones Act, but essentially it, it means that if you sail exclusively in uh, the United States, um, and, in the US waters, only you have to, to US have ports. Yeah. like a 95% um, crew of U.S. citizens. Not just U.S. citizens, they have to be registered merchant, merchant marines. marines. <laughs> so we all have to get to work on this particular vessel. We all have to get uh, what is called, well, it's changed over the, we used to call it our MMD, which was our Merchant Mariner document. Now yeah. it's the Merchant Mariner certificate. Credential. Credential, something like that. MMC, you know, yeah. So we all had to go to a <clears throat> training program. I spent- U.S. Coast Guard training. Uh, mm -hmm. I spent a week in Piney Point, Maryland training. You got wow. to do yours in Hawaii. You were a lot luckier. Wait, that's I not fair. Oh, wow. that's not, yeah, you, yeah, but, that's not you know, right. It, <laughs> perhaps it makes people feel um, more comfortable to know that um, uh, there are types of trainings for uh, all cruise ship employees, just not this one is specific to the United States fleet. There's um, only one ship in the world. there's only one but... ship now that was sailing in the United States waters, but we had right. to do things like firefighter training. Uh, oh, wow. We had to get in an actual life raft by ourselves it was flipped upside down you had to get underneath it in a pool a huge pool and flip it back over we had to find um, a body in a you had dark to find a body in a labyrinth yeah we, we did a lot of through. extensive training and so oh my gosh. as a result of this um knowing what all of the codes are that they're, that they're calling out on the cruises and and a certain level of because we're entertainers we didn't have as much responsibility but at some point in time yeah. back before i met you i was a muster leader for evacuating a ship, which was oh, <laughs> very good, <laughs> and we got a credential, um, and it says on our Merchant Mariner credentials that we are wipers. 
white, white, white purse. purse? I think that means we purse? clean the windows. I'm not. Oh. I don't. <laughs> I don't really want to know. We never really understood what the designation of wiper was, but we think it means <laughs> it's about the lowest you're thing the you lowest can be. Yeah. certification that we give out. Yeah. So yeah. So, nothing to be <laughs> proud of. But, but, but you yeah. had fun. You got to do it with other magicians in Hawaii. You oh, I, had I had the best time. A good time. Yeah. I felt like I was at boot camp. <laughs> I was like, I want to sign up for the next one. This yeah. was the best thing going. <laughs> we had a little taste of it at Piney Point. We were all locked down. We didn't get to go anywhere. We had to stay on the, you know, right there. And Fred's running the streets of Waikiki yeah, out there. Exactly. Hanging. exactly. He, had, he had so much more fun. Yeah. I totally did, yeah. <laughs> so. so what is it like um, working together? You guys are married. So what's it like, like, I guess, working as spouses? How does that, how does that work? <laughs> Do you see the hand marks around yeah, my neck? Right. <laughs> Just like everybody, we have our days. Um, you know, it, it. I think you, initially when you were with somebody 24 hours a day, seven days a week, pretty much 365, it's really hard. Um, yeah. Uh, but- once you get then it becomes your base through that you're yeah. just kind of like it's just like everybody else it actually it might be easier because you just go like well if we fight we're going to be that's around gonna each be other around each other and fighting and that's going to be annoying <laughs> so at some point you just <laughs> stop fighting you're just like okay well that's clearly going to lead to a fight so let's move on and i think it gets a little bit easier but i don't know yeah we don't we don't really have the fights we did in the early days no but it is a lot. I mean, it is a lot of together time. Although that's kind of a benefit of being home right now because you can be down in your studio working and creating and I can be upstairs and we get we get more space than we do on Christmas. Yeah, we see each other <laughs> at mealtime now. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah. I, it's you actually been, to add? I do. Yeah. I mean, it, it's been really good because we're very different people. We're opposites in many ways. So um, what... Uh, we make up for each other's deficiencies that way, if that makes sense. So yep. um, what I'm good at, she's not. And what I'm bad at, she's good at. So we kind of have our departments and it makes us, a, a <laughs> yeah. good, I was going to say one whole person, yeah. but uh, it makes us a good team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So I know the first rule of magic is that the magician never reveals his secrets, um, but you did a little bit earlier. So uh, is there a, a basic trick or a sleight of hand that you could teach us today? Uh, yeah, I can. And you're right. It is breaking a rule. But um, here, here's the thing is I actually It wrote... might help chief out. It might help chief wait, out wait, wait, for wait. us to do magic <laughs> to someone else. This is, this is a mercy <laughs> run. <laughs> you want me to do, hey, you want me to, want me to do my trick first? He's going to okay, teach yeah, you something. I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach this trick to everyone. Okay. And I know oh, Fred gosh. knows this trick. It is. I hope he's not going to teach it because it's, it's that cool. Okay. You guys ready? <laughs> are you, are you, oh, no. are you, is everyone ready out there? Oh, everyone gosh. ready? Check it out. Right. Check it out. Everyone. All right. Oh, oh, there it is. Look. <laughs> oh, ah. Okay. Actually, uh, that looks hard uh, to me. I don't know exactly how to figure that it out. That looked pretty good. Yeah, pretty, that looked pretty good. <laughs> No. Oh, I don't know how to all do right, that. Chief. I'll let, I'll let Fred, Fred teach that one. That is an optical illusion. So that is good. That is good job, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> now it's time for the pros. Now it's time well, for the pros, guys. That's a good one. Now, uh, a couple of years back, I wrote a book. There's a big glare on <gasps> that. The way. Oh, wow. Called Making Magic. There it is. And the idea is that um, I tried to pick some tricks that people could do like around a dinner table or in an office setting and that way that they'd uh they'd be able to experience a little bit of what it's like to pull off a trick and spread the magic around so i figured i could create a little army of magicians that could um to sort of spread the joy in places i couldn't okay. so here's one of the gonna... tricks out of that book do you want me to flip the camera again or you... uh yeah let's try that okay. we'll flip the camera that's that one and we're on. Okay. So this one only uses two cards. I have Leah's first choice, the, the ace of spades there. And uh, what's the other? The other one's a four of hearts. Okay. So um, I'm going to take the ace. Watch the ace is going to go out of camera frame. And when it comes back, I've changed it to the four of hearts. And right there's the ace of spades. And now right under the right, boom. The ace comes back. Oh my gosh. And there's our four. 
All right. Wow. To perform this trick, you need a couple of things. You need to know some sleight of hand and you need some special. Watch that camera, not that. Oh, okay. Okay. And some special uh, cards. In this case, I have one card that is. Oh my gosh. What a trickster. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Don't. I cheat. Don't. Who knew? Someone <laughs> your secret. No. Oh, yeah. no. Get out of the magician's guild. No, or I, I include these. If anybody wants the book, I include these cards, but you could make them yourself by gluing two cards, two face to face and two back to back, and you'll end up with with this uh, situation. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Wow. You totally tricked us. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the idea. Yeah. And now the sleight of hand involved, <laughs> you have to know the sleight of hand and it's two things. It's moving the cards back and forth like this and while turning your wrist, while breaking your wrist face up, face down. And when you combine those two elements at the same time, it looks for all the world like you're showing um, you know, I, the I always point. Card. So I'm like, there's the ace and the other card and look where my finger's pointing right to that four. But because I've switched those as I turn, it's, it's imperceptible. You can't see that switch. And it looks like it's an optical illusion that you're yeah. seeing the other side. And so if I'm standing up, I'll put this behind my back. And when I bring it out, I've turned it over. Or if I'm at a table, I will put the visible card underneath and then bring it out. And lots of times when I make that switch, I'll shake this card, I'll shake this one, um, just to get everybody's attention, you know, to yeah. divert their eyes to the part where the trick's not actually being done. There's no dirty work. I'm like, watch, I'll shake this. And they change places and then go back to that display. And uh, the best part of that is if you get matching cards to this one, you can say, you can put those in your pocket and then say, oh, here, you can try yourself and bring out the two regular cards that match and it'll drive people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all. That is, so, that is so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I wanted I had to pick no a good idea. one for you to share with you. That's so cool. Um, do you guys have like a consistent act that you do or do you add in new tricks? And if you do add new stuff, how do you come up with them? Boy, that's a great question. So um, I would say over the course of my career, I've, I've got a core act. You know, there's, there's routines that I know play well and they match my personality because that's an important thing. The magic has to look like it's, uh, it's um, organic to the person performing it. Mm -hmm. And I would say the same with Bobby. She's got songs that she are her core act that she loves to sing. And she knows she can connect well with the song and with the audience. Um, but at the same time, we're always trying to remain relevant. Mm -hmm. So we're adding new songs, but maybe new popular songs. I'm working on new magic. And occasionally we can marry those two ideas. So Bobby's singing while I'm performing magic. And nice. um, we, we can't do that today. Yeah. But <laughs> it's it's kind of that's the toughest thing I would say. You had an existing show that was already really good, and then um, I joined the show sort of just as an assistant. But to to become a partner in the show, it has been a little bit more difficult, especially to feature me singing because you have to marry, you have to make the music make sense in the context of a magic show. So you, you can't just say stop and then say, okay, and now Bobby will sing. That doesn't, <laughs> that's like, what? We came here for a magic show. So it has to, A, we're comedy magicians. So it has to flow um, and there has to be comedy. And, um, you know, we, we can have moments in our show when we do that are tender uh, and draw the audience in so that you have, you know, ebbs and flows um, in your show, but we're predominantly wow. comedy driven. So the songs have to make sense. There has to be a reason why I'm about to sing. And then we take the the closing of the show to to marry the two talents together, so Typically, that we can yeah. create a tender and beautiful piece to close our show with. In in, in today's wow. world, I'm trying to figure out magic I can do where um, audience doesn't have to be physically present. Whether yeah, uh, sure. it's it's like this of oh, long distance, or let's say live entertainment comes back, but there's still social distancing. 
then I can't say, hey, pick a card out of the deck because yeah. people aren't going to want to touch things. So I'm mm -hmm. looking for sort so of reinvent yeah. all the time. So it's kind of a constant, but we do have a core. Uh, we have what we call our A show, our B show, maybe our C we can draw from if we have to. We've got this other material to answer the original question, which is yes, we have a core thing and we slowly make changes. So if you pull one trick and add a new one and see how it does, and then the script sometimes writes itself with our audience helping with um, audience involvement or things yeah. the audience says. Speaking of audiences and shows, uh, if there's anybody watching right now that is with, I don't know, USO or with uh, base operations that bring in entertainment for the troops, uh, we would love to do that. I've always won. That's yeah. like on my bucket list and yeah. I've never actually been able to do it. Yeah. I almost went to Kuwait a couple of years back. Do you remember that? Yeah. But uh, they picked a different team. So I, I didn't, I didn't get asked on that. Yeah. But, so uh, we, we do have army morale, welfare and recreation army MWR who is watching and yeah. they partner up with army entertainment. And so army, army entertainment, they book shows. Um, you know, we've been to, we've seen concerts from army entertainment, things like that. So we can put you in touch with our friends over there and see if they when things open back up, if they might have some space for you guys, that would be fun. That would be really fun. Yeah. And just, you and just for some twofer. Yeah. You get a twofer <laughs> and, and let's, let's bring up, um, uh, let's talk about you both were on Penn and Teller's Fool Us. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about that experience? Nerve wracking. <laughs> Super scary. <laughs> I don't know why we can, I can sing in front of, I've, I've performed at air shows where there's 50,000 people, uh, and not, be nervous at all but something about television was really scary <laughs> well and we've done a lot of television but in this case um it was a different format it yeah. just felt a little bit different i actually went flat calm like once i walked out on stage i thought i'm probably only going to do this once i might as well enjoy it I, I mean i remember that thought going through my head <laughs> not me so i was like a surgeon at that moment but she was, I couldn't believe it. Her knees were so actually scared. shaking. But I will tell you just in general about the overall experience, it was amazing. Um, you know, we'd heard some stories about other shows that from friends that had been on other television shows that w didn't have as, as a positive of a outcome for all of them. But everything we had heard from people who had been on Fool Us uh, was positive. And so, you get I, you get we, like a team assigned to you that makes sure yeah. that you're you have everything you need. And it was amazing. From literally everything about it was amazing. I don't think we had a complaint um, other than being terrified. But you know they took well, really good care of us. They were incredibly gracious and complimentary. Well, we performed an illusion. I would say that was what was stressful when we shipped it to Las Vegas to to do the television program the shipping company damaged it it got um it got a little beat up on the no. way there to do the show yeah uh, thank goodness the illusion builder was actually in las vegas and came to the rescue but yeah uh, but, and wow. all of our team helped oh my gosh all involved with fool us as well helped us put you know gave us more time to practice yeah. and they and did what they had to do to help us out there's, it was just a great experience there's a guy overall. Named gillis who's in charge of props for the show and he's like my personal hero because he yeah. made sure we <laughs> we had everything we needed but overall it was great i mean they keep you really secluded uh, from penn and teller you never never see penn and teller until the actual like go we're live we're gonna film um they oh wow have they have a stand-in um yeah. they have no idea people. what's coming that on purpose so yeah. that they have to judge it um for what it is so uh and then you, and then they go okay you get a practice run with some people sitting out there pretending to be pen and teller and then they're like and now we shoot and go so and then you walk out and there's pen and teller and you're like uh. Uh. And i don't even think it was pen and teller that had me as nervous as just that, that the cameras were rolling and i didn't know if i could say if something goes wrong can i be like cut <laughs> you know i just I didn't know what to do so we just went for it but it was a lot of fun and we always have nothing but positive things to say about yeah. that, that experience. It was amazing. Yeah, I would do it again. In fact, I've thought of having a rematch because yeah. uh, it was a lot of fun to do. And, and if there's fans of the show out there, I mean, know that it really is. I mean, there's no, the only editing really that you see is, um, you know, that we talked to Allison for a long period of time. So after you finish and, and they try and figure out how you did it uh, is 
really a long time where on TV they cut that down. So it, it seems yeah, like- it seems like, you know, you've only talked to Allison for a few seconds, but really we were standing there chatting with her for a while. And, um, and other than that, I mean, it's, it's very honest and ethically run. So yeah, it's very cool. All right. All right. Oh, well, good. our time is almost up. Uh -oh. so we're going to have one more trick. We're going to have okay. one more have trick, fun. but you ready, ready, ready for mine? Mine's a yep. stage production. Uh Oh, this is a stage production. Stage production. Stage okay. production. This stage. is like, you probably never seen anything like this on chief chat live. All right. No, no one has, uh, no. if everyone's ready. Be ready, guys. Uh -oh. Here it is. I'm ready. It's coming. Abra, Abra, Drukadabra. Oh, oh, you disappeared. <laughs> you just didn't finish. Live on television. <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh, my gosh. Oh. There we go. Follow that up, Fred. <laughs> You're yeah. have to, you are, oh, you are in trouble, Fred. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> oh, no camera gonna, that's, He's going to be the one hired next for the entertainment. Uh, yeah, I know. Forget me. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I, hey, hey, do you mind showing us uh, one more trick? Okay, yeah, because I, I, I have this hanging there and people are probably wondering what is that. So um, let's see. We'll do, uh, this time we'll do Julie and Chief. I want you both. Um, Oh, I'm in on this. All right. Yeah. This is so much pressure. Uh, oh my in gosh. Just a moment. Okay. Oh wait. So hey, pin this, pin this, Leah. Yeah. Okay, no. Julie. I want you to think of a number between um, one and fifty-two. Okay, got it. And Chief, you you can do one to a hundred, one to uh, one to one hundred twenty, something like that. Any number. Just any number. Keep that in your mind. And uh, Julie, um, I'll come back to you, Chief. Uh, Julie, which number did you uh, want? You want me to tell you the number? Yeah. 31. 31. Okay. So um, here's the reason I ask. In, um, let's, no, let's stay here for just a minute. Okay. In the world of magic and um, card tricks, remember when I asked Leah to name a card, she said Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades is like the second most popular card to pick. If you just say, Name a card, people say Ace of Spades, second choice. Number one, Queen of Hearts. People say Queen of Hearts. <laughs> Leah. She picked both. She picked both. I she do. picked both, see? Yeah, oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's right. Um, I, you're right, I didn't even think of it. She picked both. So this time, um, here's what I do. I have a list of, the reason I know that is somebody did a survey. And uh, let's switch to the other camera here. I have a list on my phone in my notes. I had to put my glasses on so I could find it. Uh, in my notes, I've got a list of commonly selected cards. So like I said, uh, number one, Queen of Hearts. Second <laughs> one, Ace of Spades. All the way down to 52, you can see, right? Wow. Okay. But Julie, you picked, you didn't pick a card, you said a number, and I okay. figure, okay, that way I, I can't influence you. You picked a number, I wouldn't know which number you picked. Which number did you say? I've forgotten already. 31. 31, okay, so then we'll scroll until we see 31. I can't read it, it's facing the wrong way. Was it? Seven say? of diamonds. Seven of diamonds, okay. That'll be your card, okay? Okay, got it. All right. And that way it wasn't influenced. Now, Chief, you're thinking of a number. I have a book here. I've <laughs> I love bloopers. I like where people do dumb things. And I found a book that has, it's full of like uh, celebrities and they say crazy stuff. And in here are, I think 50 or 60, I think there's 60 different celebrities in here with uh, crazy things that they say. I asked you to think in, let's see, there's a hundred and thirty pages, I think in here. Uh, I asked you to think of a number, whatever number you wanted. What did you think of? 73. 73. All right. Yes. Let's, uh, we'll break this open. I'll just go through. We'll get up to, okay. 60, uh, 64 is Hugh Grant. Um, 66, Leslie Lohan, or Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Alec Baldwin, that's Target Rich. Uh, Tiger Woods, he had some things. But you um, you said 73, is that right? Yes. Okay, 
So I think the, the names are on this page, mm -hmm. 73 over here, and your celebrity is Tom Cruise. Yes. Good one? All right. Yes. Um, let's say, let's go back to other camera, Bob. Uh, if you were picking a, what's your favorite Tom Cruise movie? Tom Cruise. Oh, man, hold up. Uh, uh, I'll just say Gosh. Top Gun. Yeah. Top Gun. Okay. Top Gun. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So, uh, all right. We're back here. Uh, you you had uh, Tom Cruise, Top Gun, and Julie, I forgot your card again. Sorry. I'm thinking. Seven of Diamonds. It. Seven of Diamonds. All right. Now, over here, when we started the entire chat, I have uh, an envelope here. Nah, no way. Yeah. Nah. It's a. It's no. a there's one thing in the envelope, one thing only, one piece of paper right here. Okay. okay, let me grab a hold of that and slide it up. You'll notice it is a picture of- <gasps> Oh my gosh, shut Tom, up, stop Tom it. Cruise <laughs> in Top shut Gun. Up. Shut and up. in his pocket is- Oh my gosh. What? Whatever. <laughs> what? No way, no is it no way. The way. Of diamonds. Oh my gosh. Oh no way! So good job, guys. That's oh, no wow. way. Oh my gosh, that made my whole week. Wow. Oh, that's no, so man. awesome! Wow. What the? No, that, that's not possible. Hold on. What did you do that? That thing was up there the whole time. Yes. yes. Why? We started the Zoom call in. Number one, I never picked number 31. I was going to pick seven, but then I'm like, no, number 31. Everybody so how, picks seven. I mean, Everyone I, picks seven, I yeah. think yes. you're, and so I'm like, seven I'm going to stump this 13, guy and probably. I'm going to pick 31. So that's yeah. actually, and you ended up with seven. That's kind of funny all by itself. You know what's <laughs> weird though? I can never be your subject because I always pick the same stupid cards too. And you're like, I know you're going to pick that card, pick yeah. a different card. So yeah. Yeah. I can't wow. practice with it because she always says the same thing. <laughs> My mind. Oh my I'm gosh. so blown. Yeah. But but I you can see you like blown emoji. I have I have to go through all those extra steps because I can't just say pick a card. Um, yeah. you know, over the internet. So that's that was so cool. Oh my yeah. gosh, that was awesome, y'all. That was so much fun. <laughs> wow, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. I did. I loved it. I love magic. That great closer. <laughs> great closer. Wow. Well, wow. please, uh, can, can we plug our social media? Yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. Yeah, What's ahead on. for you guys? What's ahead for Becker Magic? And where can we go to find more about you? Right. Um, so we have quite a few. Actually, the best place to go is beckermagic.com, which is a website. And uh, it sort of can redirect you to wherever else we are. So if you see, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you just remember Becker Magic. Wait, there it is. Becker Magic. Becker, Becker Magic on Facebook. On, and it's um, also, yeah, a Facebook slash Becker Magic on Instagram, which is kind of fun there. We're Except I'm real putting Becker, a lot of my workout videos up there now. Real Becker Magic on Instagram because real somebody Becker. else had taken Becker Magic on Instagram. Yeah, <gasps> which has was, nothing to do with magic. Oh, it was like a so. wrestling team or something. We were like, okay. Yeah, so, so we're, we're real <laughs> Becker Magic there. And that's where we mostly are. But um, yeah. Wow, that's a stay stay behind before we go off the here. Just stay right there. Stay tuned. I just want to take a moment, Fred and Bobby. I'm gonna finish off with a uh, one joke and then I'm gonna say goodbye. Oh, what do you call a dog that can do magic? Come on, no one. You, you know the answer. You know it. Mm -hmm. A labracadabrador. <laughs> oh. oh <my> no. <laughs> <That's> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Fred and Bobby. <laughs> hey, Fred and Bobby, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing some magic and laughs with us. We appreciate you taking the time to hang out with the Exchange family and all of the servicemen, women, and their family members out there today. This means so much to our Airmen, Soldiers, Sailors, Marines, and our Coasties. We wish you the best going forward, and we wish you the best of luck. As a matter of fact, I missed one question here. Somebody did ask. I'm going to finish it off with this. Somebody did ask, do you know... If, when the cruise industry comes back on, are you on Carnival, Royal Caribbean? What cruise line are you on so they can come and see you? Oh, good question. Um, yeah, we work on uh, many different cruise lines, so it's not like we're locked in with one. Uh, we, you would find us on Celebrity or... Uh, uh, we work um, some boutique cruise lines, um, Regent, uh, Seven Seas, and Oceana. A lot of the time, they take um, 
a lot of our dates. Norwegian. We work Norwegian, Celebrity, Holland America, um, occasionally Princess and Royal Caribbean here and there. So yeah, yeah. We, we work a lot of them. But um, if they follow us on um, on social media, then they can always message us too and ask you know for our schedule. We, yeah. we don't cool. anticipate cruising before 2021. But we actually had a posted schedule. On we our had website. a posted schedule. It's all gone now. It's all gone. Oh, yeah. oh no. Wow. wow. But, yeah. uh. But it's all right. Stay we'll positive. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make sure you follow Becker Magic. Uh, stay positive. Thank you so much for, for bringing such joy to our audience today. Exchange out. Bye.